Hello, welcome, I'm Commissar Marek and today we are going to be making a video about CC3 Augustus mechanic called Sentiment. This is the big one, it's taken a while to put together and to gather all the information necessary as the game does not itself provide this information and you need to look into the code and I had some people who do that for me because I don't code. So again, I got some of this information from the devs themselves as well as from some people who are familiar with how the code works. And so it's possible I'm gonna miss something because there's a lot to go into what sentiment is and how it's calculated. So if I make any mistakes, feel free to let me know, but I suspect that there's gonna be at least something that I miss or uh, even, you know, say wrong because again, it's, it's rather complex. Also, my cats are uh, a bit freaky today, so if you hear any meowing or fighting noises, sorry for that. Uh, let's start with what sentiment is. So, a sentiment is essentially an expansion of city mood effect that was always in the game if you've played Julius or Vanilla you know that city has a mood level and uh, in Julius and Vanilla it would be affected by how much you charge for taxes in your city and how much you pay in wages and that would determine the city sentiment and then people could for example start rioting or stop coming to the city or start leaving the city emigrating uh, if you mismanage that. It's relatively straightforward in Julius, it was just a simple calculation, you didn't have to know much at all. In Augustus, the devs expanded this feature, such as, if you watched my video on health, you know that health is way more complex than it was before, and it's uh, because of that, that they also added the sentiment to be reflected as such. The only problem is, with health, at least we have information in the advisors for it. With uh, sentiment, we are currently not given the information of what's your base sentiment value, what's your target and such. I'm gonna explain all this um, in this video, but just know that these numbers, even though I'm gonna tell, them, tell you the numbers, you will not essentially know um, what your current numbers are unless you calculate it yourself or use the sentiment overlay, which will show you if people are displeased in some houses and then you can uh, see, oh, I need to fix it, and I'm gonna tell you the tools that you have to fix it. Because there are several ways for a house to drop sentiment, and it depends on your difficulty. I'm gonna be covering what it is on very hard difficulty, as uh, that's what I play on, and that's what most people play on, and the people who've been giving me this data also play on very hard, so I don't know how the lower difficulties are, but I suspect you get a better uh, base sentiment value. So, to my knowledge, house can have sentiment value of from 0 up to 100, sort of like health, and if sentiment of a house, any house uh, that's in the city, be it a tent or a villa or a palace, has a sentiment that's lower than 55, you might face negative events from that um, from that house. That means criminals, that means looting of warehouses or granaries, in Augustus, that means uh, people are refusing to work, uh, which will um, put some of the air industry out of commission for a while, and um, even, yeah, spawning criminals, things like that. So uh, there is also the city mood uh, still, so if your global sentiment is low enough, then you will also start to see stuff like the riots. And so these things are still in the game, sort of like in the Julius I explained earlier. But it's much more complex now with the sentiment being a basically an additional feature that's on house by house basis. It's no longer just a calculation of your whole city and that's what your level of sentiment is. Uh, sentiment is calculated at house by house basis. And so uh, what is the target sentiment or base sentiment value for your house? As, as I mentioned, it's uh, 55 for any negative events to start happening from that house specifically. And then, oh yeah, your city mood is calculation of all your houses, uh, what their sentiment value is, and the average is what the city sentiment is, okay? City mood. You can still have emigration, you can still have riots, things like that, if the sentiment drops low enough in the city. Um, so what contributes to this uh, sentiment, and more importantly, what is its base value? 55 is the threshold where bad things start to happen, and 60 is your base value for very hard. Which means that if there are things that affect uh, sentiment negatively for these people, 
they'll very quickly start to become unhappy and let you know by spawning criminals and making your industry inefficient and things like that. So uh, on very hard you need to be kind of aware of the sentiment being a thing and how to fix it. So um, that is a thing. You might have noticed that if uh, basically people immigrate into the city, they set up tents and these tents are basically protected from uh, dropping sentiment and sentiment itself can only drop by a certain value per month currently. And that is um, to prevent the city from, you, you set something, like for example a tax hike and suddenly the city collapses because the sentiment would drop suddenly and very quickly. No, you actually don't have that. Instead what you have is a gradual decline of sentiment points and uh, again, as I said, tens are protected. When the people immigrate into the city, they have a period of basically like um, how would you call it sort of like in the world like the initial optimism or whatever you would call it where they will not uh, uh, effectively lose out on sentiment points quickly because that would mean that any tense you make will immediately start to become very um around it so um how do you again one of the things that i haven't talked about but it's important how do you fight crime is actually the, the game lies to you. You don't fight crime. You fight crime by prefect stabbing the criminals, but um, that doesn't actually like solve it. Um, so crime is only solved by fixing the sentiment, basically making sure the people are happy. Otherwise, they will still keep spawning the criminals, and that itself can prevent prefects from doing their rounds in the city, resulting in uh, fires and the fact you have to then have multiple prefects in a single block, especially in the desert. Uh, but that's uh, kind of a tangent. Let's go back to sentiment and what are the values for it. I've got some numbers here. Let's hope I can cover all of it uh, reasonably. And so what are the modifiers for sentiment? Uh, I will cover something that's um, a little bit further, but I need to explain this first, I feel like, because it's very, uh, this is very impactful. Okay, so that is house inequality, or you could call it jealousness of your houses. So house inequality, pleb houses worse than small villa, so any any plebs essentially, can suffer from this modifier. The game calculates an average housing level by checking how many houses you have for each level, 1 to 20. So that's the evolution levels, one being small tent. Then it compares the house level of each house that are worse than villas to this average amount, based on which category a house belongs to. There is a different multiplier for it. Small tents, large tents, minus 3 points per difference. So they suffer the most from a higher evolved housing in the city. The jealousness is higher. Then small shacks and small castles have minus 2 per difference. And large casa and grand insula is minus 1 point per difference. So let's say average housing level is 10. And you have a large shack, which is level evolution level 4. Then it belongs to that minus 2 multiply category, so your house will get a total penalty of 6 times minus 2 because it's 6 levels above the large shack which is level 4, the top housing level is 10 therefore there are 6 levels of additional evolution steps that this house does not have compared to the rest of the city and therefore it is 6 times minus 2 which results in minus 12 sentiment modifier to that house just because it, there are richer people existing in the city which have better conditions, better evolution levels. You can see how this can be uh, a problem. Um, there is no way to gain positive amount of target sentiment points from this category. Okay. So it's just a jealousness factor. There is no positive factor to this. All right. So um, another modifier that affects this, uh, unemployment rate. For every 1% of unemployment above 5%, you, have, you reduce the target sentiment for houses by one point. This is probably the worst way to spend sentiment points as unemployment is very valuable. If you have too many workers, then it is um, much more advised to delete some houses, expand infrastructure. Yeah, so don't sit on unemployment. In Julius, um, you might, if you go and watch DDR Jake or people who still play Julius, you will see them often run a city of 30% plus uh, unemployment. Yeah, in Augustus, anything past 5% is severe. A severe reduction to your sentiment in the city. And can be really bad. So, we cannot really do that anymore. You can't sit on unemployment and be unpunished. 
you need to employ these people. And that's a, a big factor because why do people do that in Julius? Why do they sit on unemployment? They don't want to pay the wages. So uh, they just, you know, they collect taxes from a city that's 30% larger than it should be, but they don't give the people jobs. And Julius is okay with that as long as you set the wages correctly. In Augustus, even if you pay people more wages, this will not be allowed. You will suffer massive problems. But this is a factor, okay? Just know that it's a thing. You don't get any positive bonuses from having no unemployment, for example. Then there is the wage difference, which is um, plus two sentiment points to target for each point of wages paid above Rome. This is the most powerful tool to fix your target sentiment. It has no upper limit to contribution. Players need to evaluate how hard it is to make money on the map. What kind of city composition are they planning? If you have a map where it's hard to make money, then you can't afford to set wages too high. On the other hand, if you play a map where you can get palaces easily, access to two wines, etc., and imports are cheaper, then it can be a good idea to afford bigger differences between housing at the cost of higher wages. So, uh, yes, any, any wages you set above Rome will give you plus two sentiment, and I do not believe that this is capped. I could be wrong on this, but in Julius you only benefited from plus eight above Rome. In Augustus you can set it higher, because there are many ways to lose sentiment, so this should technically allow you to gain it back. Okay. Then we have food. The game checks how many types of food are, food are required for your house, then checks how many types of food the current house has. For each available extra category, the food gets plus 12 sentiment points, up to 24. So each house can benefit up to two extra food types that are providing sentiment bonus to it. But this is really hard to do on a lot of maps, because you don't have access to plentiful food types, usually. And so what this does, for example, anything below Grand Insula requires only one type of food. So let's say you have a large insula and you feed it wheat for its food. And then you would see it have uh, problems with sentiment. So if you feed it fruits, it would get plus 12. If you also fed it uh, fish, then it would be plus 24. And if you feed it another type, uh, vegetables, it would not get that bonus. It's only up to two types. But also the first food that's mandatory and required by that house does not give you the sentiment bonus. Same as Grand Insula requires two food types. If there is a Grand Insula that eats fish and wheat, it does not get any bonuses. It would have to be fed another type that's extra, surplus to requirement. Okay. So that's how the food works. Uh, oh, something important about the food, why it's not advised, not just logistics and the fact many maps don't allow a surplus food types often. Um, health, uh, I mentioned this in the health video, I think extra food types you feed to people like this, same as the sentiment, a surplus to requirement will boost their health, meaning that old people will not die as quickly. And that's usually a problem, I mentioned that in my unemployment video or demographic collapse video that I made very recently and in the health as well. So yeah, it, it is a factor, but sometimes uh, it can be okay. You don't really have to care about the health too much. Unless you play the map for very, very long time, usually this is not a problem on most custom maps, but it could be a factor. If anything, I often want to prevent disease, therefore, um, you know, building uh, mausoleums as well as giving people extra food could actually be something I do just to keep the city from suffering from fumigations and such, not really caring about the uh, aging too much, because I very rarely end up in a situation where that really is a concern. I think out of like 40 custom maps, I only had that happen once, so like recently, so I, I don't really think that this is a major issue, but if you play for very long times, it could be a problem. Okay, entertainment. This is a great source of sentiment. For each house, the game checks what is the required amount of entertainment points for each, and for each excess point, uh, the house gets plus one sentiment target point, up to 24. This is really a good way to improve sentiment, especially with buildings to increase your entertainment points globally, like a hippodrome or a colosseum. Check the entertainment video where I covered how many points are given and taken by each uh, evolution stage. This is great. Uh, if you have a block that's uh, rowdy, 
uh, you can just give them access entertainment if it's available on the map, like an extra arena, or give them, you know, a tavern, or tavern is a bit expensive usually with the goods, but things like that, just provide extra entertainment points, it fixes the sentiment relatively well, up to, up to 24 points, of course, so it can offset the negative things quite a bit. Uh, desirability, for each house, game checks what is the required amount of desirability points, and then for each excess point you get 0.5 sentiment target points, up to plus 20, but this is influenced by the level of the current house. An X level house can only gain up to plus X target sentiment points, which is achieved by double excess points of desirability, and excess amount after that does not uh, help it further. So basically each house can only benefit what is its required desirability to evolve, and then double that to give it extra a sentiment, but it does not benefit it further um, after that. So you can just surround small tent with plaza and hope that it will scale and make the people uh, very happy. It will help, but it won't necessarily make them completely happy and be able to ignore other things. Because the sentiment itself only is a part of the sentiment pie, you could say. Like what could contribute to um, what could contribute to the house sentiment and offset the negative values or penalties. Other temporary boosts uh, include festivals, so based on the size of the festival, every house in the city gets a temporary boost for 12 months for a year to target sentiment points. However, a second or even more festivals in a year will suffer increasing amount of penalty. Small festivals give plus 6 sentiment target points for the first festival in a year, plus 2 if it's not the first, Large festival is plus 9 for the first, plus 3 if it's within the same year as other festivals. Grand festival requires wine and is plus 18 for the first one, or plus 9 for additional uh, festivals within the year. Uh, festivals are temporary solution, you should not really rely on them too much. Uh, it could be, a, like, in a pinch it could help you if your city is suffering a wave of crime and you are waiting on, like, a large amount of money for next year. And you need to um, you need to keep people happy. You can uh, hold a festival to offset that for a year, and then be able to expand industry to employ people uh, soon. And that will help you to get across that hurdle, so that you don't collapse from sentiment. But it's definitely a feature, and as such, you should be careful about things like this. If you uh, trigger the sentiment overlay, you'll be able to see what the sentiment of a certain house is, and therefore you can easily see, oh, this house is unhappy, I should really give them extra uh, desirability or entertainment, or if I can, food types, or, you know, evolve them a little bit further to avoid those penalties that apply to them with jealousness, for example, and as such that can be um, something that is useful. The sentiment overlay will help you if you suffer crime. All it takes is a couple of houses in the city that are unhappy. Even if your main blocks are very happy, the small ones that are used in the industry and such for no global Liverpool players for example, will cause the crime. You will suffer looting from warehouses and granaries, you will suffer uh, ambushing of tax collectors, things like that, stealing money from the forums. And as such, you need to be careful about these things a lot in in um, playing with a global pool, especially. Um, I was thinking, oh yeah, uh, something that usually helps a lot is Venus, um, the Grand Temple. I mentioned this in the Grand Temple Epithet video. Um, since it gives entertainment as well as desirability to houses with the genetics um, epithet, it's great for sentiment. It's basically those two sources it gives to all houses that have access to Venus priests access. Not just the Grand Temple, but any small temple or even large temple that spawns Venus priests will get that benefit to any houses they pass. This is amazing. It stabilizes the city incredibly well. Um, I don't know if I should really talk about more things. It's, a, again, very complex topic. Hard to get your head around it. Hopefully it has helped. Uh, let me know if I missed something or if I um, had something wrong or if you didn't understand it still. You know, anything that you might have on your mind. It's gonna be everything from me. Thank you uh, for watching the video and see you around. Bye.